Well, folks, we got a new acquisition here in the collection, so it's something different this time, but I figure some of you guys will think it's pretty neat. So I had a customer that came in probably about a month and a half or so ago, and he had a Boland's 1050 tractor that I did some work on. And when he picked it up, he told me he had this machine, and he was looking to trade for something, specifically a case tractor. And it just so happens I had an extra 446 laying around. So I traded on the 446 with a deck and a blower, and ended up with this. And he was happy with the case, and I'm happy with what I got. So take a look at this. It's a Sierra Trail Boss made by the Vesley Company. They were in Lapeer, Michigan, and nearest I can figure this was made from the late 60s to the early to mid 70s. It's a 6x6 amphibious vehicle, six wheel drive. It's powered by a Kohler K295 engine, two stroke. It has separate transmissions for each side, and it steers with the two levers that you see sticking up. So they're kind of hard to find. I haven't been able to find a lot of info on these things at all online. There's a couple of 6x6 amphibious sites out there, and it sounds like I can still get parts and whatnot for them, luckily enough, because I finally got this thing running today after the past few days trying, and it wasn't easy because, well, it's only been about 8 or 9 degrees out here for the past week or two. It hasn't really gotten above 10. But I got the thing going, and I took it for a ride, and the transmission bands are absolutely completely worn out. They're metal on metal right now, and they really need to be replaced. So it was kind of hokey to drive, but I'll throw a video here in and at the end and took it out on the street to whip around for a little while. But to drive it, all you got to do is you push your sticks forward, and it goes forward. Pull them back, it goes back. You want to turn on a dime, because this will pivot on its own axis. You split them like this, and you can spin around really fast. So it's pretty cool. It's a two-seater. It's got a little cargo area in the back. Ag tires all the way around. Some of them need tubes. It's got a pretty wide wheelbase, too. It's just under five feet wide. But it's a really cool rig, so I'm kind of looking to take it out this spring and summer and hopefully be able to run it around up in the woods and maybe find some other places that I can drive it around here. So it's definitely going to need some work. Got headlights in the front there. The chain for this tire is snapped underneath, so I'm actually doing only five-wheel drive right now, so that's going to have to get replaced. So the plan for this is to have the transmissions to get those rebuilt, which I can do those easily enough. So I'm going to try to get those pulled out this winter and do those in the cellar where it's nice and warm. I could do some repair videos on them. And then come springtime, I'm going to pull the subframe out of this thing, everything out, power wash it, clean it up, and then pretty much go from there and see if I can just start rebuilding everything, because it all needs to be done after years and years and years of abuse and whatnot. So I'm going to get the top pulled off of this thing, and I'll show you guys the underside of it. All right, so here's the underside. It's a pretty simple setup, really. It just has a subframe with all the axles go into. Everything's chain drive, like I said fairly hefty chain. Engine sits in the middle, you get your torque converter there, and then the two transmissions, and these were also made by the Vesely Corp. And I think, I know the bands are still available. Obviously enough, I can still get seals for them if I have to get bearings and whatnot, I can still get all that stuff. So, torque converter, for the short time I drove it, seemed to work well. Probably gonna have to pick up another belt for the thing, get that all taken care of. Gonna have to find another gas tank for it. It's got a boat tank in it now, but the hole doesn't really line up well with the hole in the body. So I'm gonna have to rig up something for that. Kohler engine seems to run fairly decent. It almost seems like it's a little underpowered, but you also got a figure for the time that it was built. So right now I'm debating whether I want to keep the original Kohler. I can still find most of the parts for this thing, jugs, pistons, and rings online. That's all NOS stuff. Or I also have a Briggs Vanguard 18 horse that I could swap into here. And it would be pretty cool. It would quiet it down a little bit and I think it would give it a little more torque. And I'm not real worried about being too original with the thing because I'm actually going to run this thing and use it more so than take it to shows or anything like that. So kind of going back and forth on it, but i got a few months to think about it and see what I want to do because I know people have done the conversions before. Wiring's all going to have to get redone. That's been butchered over the years, and you can see that's the chain that broke. Ended up rusting up and split pretty good, I guess, when the guy was digging it out of where he had it stored. But not too big of a deal. 
So it's definitely going to be a fun project, and hopefully I can get some good video on the rebuild and getting everything going again. But I'm looking forward to it, but i got to get the thing out of the driveway in the next week so I can keep moving stuff around for work. So I'm going to have to yank it up back with the Kubota, and then we can start pulling parts off of it and getting things squared away. But anyways, folks, there you have it. Just figured I'd show you the latest acquisition, and there'll be definitely more on this to come. So that's all for now.